Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. River of No Return is a 1954 American Western film that was directed by Otto Preminger. It stars Robert Mitchum and Marilyn Monroe. The screenplay was done by Frank Fenton, and it's based on a story by Lewis Lance, who borrowed this premise from a 1948 Italian film called The Bicycle Thieves. The storyline revolves around Matt Calder, who lives on a remote farm with his young son, Mark. He helps two unexpected visitors who lose control of their raft on a nearby river. Harry Weston is a gambler by profession, and he's racing to the nearest town to register a mining claim he has won in a poker game. His attractive wife, Kay, a former saloon hall girl, is with him. When Calder refuses to let Weston have his only rifle and horse, he simply takes them, leaving his wife behind. Unable to defend themselves against a likely Indian attack, Calder, his son, and Kay Weston begin the treacherous journey down the river on the raft that Weston left behind. There were about 12 weeks of pre-production done on the film, during which time Marilyn Monroe rehearsed and recorded the musical numbers that she did in the film. There were about 45 days of actual filming. The cast and crew departed for Calgary in late June of 1953, where they traveled to a Banff Springs hotel, which would serve as their base during the Canadian filming. As the studio caravan motored to this location, traffic was halted after a gasoline truck ahead of them exploded. Members of the company and Marilyn Monroe's boyfriend, Joe DiMaggio, organized a search party to find the driver who had run into the woods with his clothes being on fire. They eventually found the badly burned driver and he was immediately rushed to the hospital. While most of the cast and crew went to lunch during production, Marilyn Monroe preferred to go underneath the set between all the pillars and dust to find Bandit the raccoon. She would put him in her lap, pet him, and talk to his owner, Ralph Hefner, about all the animals and horses on the set. Both the director, Preminger, and Marilyn were basically forced to do the film against their will due to contractual obligations that they had. They both expressed their frustration over the quality of the script because they considered it below par. But no matter what they thought, the film was a box office hit upon its release, and it remains a popular classic western to this day. During this very difficult shoot, the director had to contend with frequent rain, Robert Mitchum's heavy drinking, an injury to Marilyn's ankle that kept her off the set for several days, and ultimately put her in a cast. Young Tommy Reddick seemed to be the director's sole source of solace. He respected this young boy's professionalism and appreciated the rapport that he had developed with Miss Monroe, which actually helped keep this actress on an even keel. Monroe was accompanied on the production by her acting coach, Natasha Lites. Preminger clashed with this woman from the very start. She insisted on taking her client aside and giving her direction, contrary to that of the director, and she had the actress enunciating each syllable of every word of dialogue with an exaggerated emphasis. Preminger called the producers in L.A. and insisted that she be banned from the set. And when the producer complied with this demand, Monroe called the producer herself and asserted 
that she wouldn't continue on the project unless she returned. Although the studio commiserated with Preminger, the feeling that Monroe was such a major box office draw that he couldn't afford to upset her, so he reinstated her acting coach. Angered by this decision, Preminger directed his rage at Monroe for the entire rest of the production. While they were shooting in Jasper, local resident Wilbur Stanley and a friend were watching some of the early morning scenes be done. Robert Mitchum accepted their invitation during a break, and they all returned to their car, where they each had a beer and just chatted for a while. Afterward, Mitchum got out of the car, threw the bottle across the ground near there, and commented, Best breakfast I ever had. When the director insisted that the actors perform their own stunts for the scenes of the rafts struggling down the rapids, delays caused the film to run over schedule and over budget. On one occasion, Marilyn Monroe had to be saved from drowning when her boots filled up with water. And on another occasion, she and Robert Mitchum had to be rescued when their raft became stuck on a rock and was on the verge of overturning. This has been somewhat debated, though, and many people on the set said that there were actually stunt doubles doing that scene and that the stars were really only allowed to perform on the raft if it was secured to the riverbank. This movie was not the first meeting of Robert Mitchum and Marilyn Monroe. Mitchum had worked at Lockheed Aircraft with Monroe's first husband, James Daughtry. The two had met on at least one occasion during the mid-1940s. This is Marilyn's only starring role in a Western. She had an uncredited supporting role in the Western comedy Ticket to Tomahawk from 1950. The director really didn't want Marilyn Monroe at all from the start. He wanted Gene Simmons for the lead, but 20th Century Fox was having none of that. They wanted their budding star, Marilyn, front and center. Marilyn took this role very seriously and did everything she could to make her performance, especially the performance where she plays the guitar and sings, look real. She worked extremely hard to get her guitar fingering to look accurate. The voice that you hear is all hers and hers alone. And the three pair of jeans that she wears throughout the film were among a collection of her personal items that sold for $42,000 at an auction at Christie's Auction House bought by designer Tommy Hilfiger. Go back and take a look at this really good 1954 Western. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.